Heights Police Department has confirmed a case at 12 that an open investigation is underway into a hazing incident that occurred last Friday night involving members of the Alamo Heights football team after they were notified by school personnel. According to sources and not the Alamo Heights School District, the reported hazing incident involved juniors who made varsity for the first time. One of the students suffered skin reaction burns to his lower body and had to be taken to an emergency room. A number of varsity players have been suspended for two games, according to the same sources. Athletic director and head coach Alamo Heights Ron Ritterman told KSAT 12 Sports that he cannot comment on the incident because it involves disciplinary action with students. But he did confirm that the Mules will play their season opener Friday night against the Matadors in Seguin. A spokesman for the Alamo Heights Police Department added this is an open investigation. In a statement, the AHISD Director of Communication said, quote, last week the district received multiple messages through our anonymous tip line regarding safety concerns and allegations of misconduct by some players on the football team. The alleged incident did not take place on AHISD property, nor was it during school hours. Moving on, the KSAT Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers is now two days away, set for this Saturday in the Alamo Dome with the first game set to kick off at 1130. It involves six all-ranked teams in a triple header, starting with Smithson Valley and Reagan, followed by Judson and Johnson at 3.30, and the nightcap, number one against number two, when Brennan hosts the Steel Knights. Tickets on sale at all Las Palapas restaurants. Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Uh, Houston Texans will host the Niners tonight at Energy Stadium for their final preseason game. But for former Aggie offensive lineman Kenyon Green, this will be his first. That's after the Texans made him a first round pick at number 15 overall to help protect Davis Mills, who was sacked 31 times last season. So what advice would a veteran such as Titus Howard give to the rookie? Be calm, man. We've been playing this game for a long time. I mean, yeah. Uh, the level you get harder and harder as you, you know, increase it. But uh, Ken's a good player. It's the reason he was taking, what, 15th overall. So uh, he just go out there, you know, play his game, you know, be calm, you know, just let, let the older guys, you know, talk to him, get him going. I think he'll, be, I think he'll do a good job. Kickoff tonight at Energy Stadium is set for 7:15. And time now, 444 and 78 degrees for now. Coming up next, a first look at why a pastor was arrested for watering his neighbor's lawn. And welcome back. It is 447. A pastor is speaking out after being arrested for watering his neighbor's lawn. ABC's Rihanna Ali has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the pastor arrested for watering his neighbor's flowers, speaking out. I ain't did nothing suspicious or nothing wrong. I told him I'm a pastor. I passed him to I don't hear you. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. New police body camera video capturing the tense moments when Alabama pastor Michael Jennings was approached by police. At the time, Jennings doing a favor for an out of town neighbor and watering their plants with permission. The pastor telling his story first on GMA. To be shackled and to have your freedom taken away from you, you know, it's something else. It's uh, dehumanizing. And I thought, you know, why would they be doing this? It's something that it gives you nightmares. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of our exclusive interview and what the Childersburg Police Department is saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. And looking outside with Trans Guy, looking out there at I-10 at New Braunfels, very little traffic right now, but things are moving if you want to get out very early this morning. KSAT Connect pictures continue to come in, and that helps us tell part of the story. Go to the Weather Authority app. It's at the very bottom. Look for KSAT Connect to submit your pictures. Yep, and just a couple of buttons to push, and you can send in some of these pictures. And got a lot of them this morning of some rain gauges here. Inch and a half today, and this fell in less than 30 minutes in and around San Antonio. And that's what happened yesterday. I mean, at this rain gauge and then also at the airport when those storms started popping up we picked up about a little bit less than an inch and a quarter in roughly an hour out there at the airport officially inch and a half and that's most we've had around here and for it is just beautiful and we're going to continue to show some of these great uh case connect pictures with some of the rain gauges out there all right speaking of rain there's not a lot going on as of right now but i've been watching this area up here in parts of the hill country right 
right now. This was up in junction earlier, and as you can see, there's still that uh, flash that flood warning up there for portions uh, in just to the west of junction. Now this is starting to work its way a little bit further down to the south. So we're going to have to watch as some of these try to develop and then even further on down to the south. And this just sort of uh, popped up in the past couple of minutes right here just to the uh, kind of southeast of Uvalde. Some of these showers that are starting to pop up and again, almost like yesterday where there's nothing there and all of a sudden, boom, these things come down and they're dumping rain at a fairly decent rate with some of the, that reddish area right there. And we're going to have to watch as some of these continue to pop up and develop throughout the rest of the morning. And then you can see right here, even in eastern Medina County, one more of those cells that popping up right there just to the south of Castroville. So again, we're going to see a similar situation to yesterday. Some of these will continue to pop up as the, uh, the morning rolls on, and then we'll see a few more later on. So we're going to stay in the mid 70s. This morning, about a 30% chance to see some of these showers. And again, once they develop, you can get a lot of rain very quickly and we'll make it through the 80s later on this morning. We're going to be at 85 degrees today at noon and I still have that chance for some of the showers. Yesterday we were putting in about 40 50% chance for some rain. I'm, I'm going for 30% today and 92 for a high temperature. Now this is the computer model. This is one of them that's a little more aggressive as far as some of these uh, morning showers popping up around here and doing just exactly about what was going on yesterday with this. And this one's not as bullish as having rain around this afternoon. A couple of other computer models are. So we'll still, like I said, the overall what you can take away from this is Yes, we will have some scattered rain around this morning and then again this afternoon, 85 at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around there, and then later on this afternoon, 92 with just a few showers and storms here and there. Again, I don't think most of us will see rain, but if you do, could have, you know, an inch, inch and a half, two inches really, really quickly. So we're going to have to watch out for that. About the same situation tomorrow, mid 90s, I think a little more sunshine. We start to warm up. It's going to be pretty hot. And hum I mean, the humidity, boy, that, now it's saying that's really thick out there. And we'll have just a stray shower to mention of it Saturday, Sunday, Monday, mid 90s. Then rain chances kind of scooch up a little bit more going into the uh, middle part of next week and low 90s. I accept this trade off. No 100s will take the, uh, you know, all over the place chance of rain and the humidity. Yeah, I'm, I'm good yeah. with that as well. As long as that humidity is getting squeezed out a little bit in the yeah. form of some rain, right? that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's part of the deal. That's one condition of our deal. Yes, Mother Nature, we are good with this. <laughs> 452, 78 degrees. Owen Wilson's new superhero dad show sets a record on Paramount Plus and a first look at Mike Tyson his new show on Hulu. Five to five, Mike Tyson punches his way onto streaming with a new show, plus Paramount Plus sets a record. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You've got to be the meanest fighter God ever created. The life of former heavyweight boxing champion Mike Tyson coming to your TV today. The series Mike gets into everything from Tyson's tough upbringing to his rape conviction, his unmatched boxing success and more. Trevante Rhodes plays Tyson, telling me that to play such a complicated character. To have the opportunity to convey all that or to have the opportunity to represent all that is, you know, that's a blessing. Two episodes of Mike are out today on Hulu. Sunny baby! Happy birthday! Thank you, brother. Mark Wahlberg's daughter almost couldn't breathe after watching his latest movie, Me Time, a comedy with Kevin Hart and Regina Hall. At the premiere this week in Los Angeles, he says he didn't tell his family what to expect before seeing it. They didn't know I was going to be appearing nude or any of this craziness, and they were embarrassed, but they could not stop laughing. I mean, the look on my, my daughter's face, what I mean, she was purple, but she could not stop laughing. Meantime, it's Netflix tomorrow. Your dad's a superhero. A super debut for the Paramount Plus superhero movie Secret Headquarters. The streaming service says that the Owen Wilson film about a dad with secret powers set a record for the most watched original Paramount Plus movie in its first seven days of release. But Paramount Plus didn't offer up any numbers to support the claim. An actress, entrepreneur, and fashion icon Blake Lively with a birthday today, she's 35. While L.A. Law star Blair Underwood is 58. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now for 57 and 78 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, what's next now that more than 40 million Americans could see their student loan debt reduced or eliminated?
Plus, Fitbit is announcing three more versions of his popular fitness trackers. Details coming up in Tech Bytes. And Transcad right now as we head to commercial break. Showing live look at I-10 at New Braunfels. Even in the last 10 or 15 minutes, we do see traffic starting to slowly pick up. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police respond to a cutting in the downtown area overnight. We have details. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. President Biden announcing student loan forgiveness for millions of Americans. And while many are excited, critics say the plan is unfair. The details coming up. And a quick look outside with live cam starting with a humid 78 degrees after all the rain we've had. Morning, everybody. It's Thursday, August 25th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a wonderful weekend. Today, the chances continue, but not as much. Mike Osterhage joins us live. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And I'm going to show you radar in a second because things are starting to uh, pop up even even more so, even as we uh, just since last weather hit about uh, 10 minutes ago or so. Like I said, radar in just a second. 78 degrees right now. Look at that bottom number. That's at 74, that dew point. That means it's pretty darn humid out there. It is definitely fog up your glasses when you walk outside. 92 for a high temperature today. We hit 90 yesterday, and I think just a degree or two warmer than that and still below normal. The normal high right now is 95. The aquifer yesterday went down three tenths of a foot. Of course, check with your local area as far as watering restrictions are concerned and mold. It was 12,000 plus day before and then yesterday went up even higher than that 13,120. All right, here's a look at radar right now. And again, we've got that one spot up there just uh, to the south of Junction in Edwards County that we've been watching and that's uh, been still kind of hanging on in there which yeah, it will produce and is producing a couple of uh, decent downpours out here in uh, in northern Edwards County or northeastern Edwards County. And these are kind of drifting down to the south a little bit. So northern Real County and then portions of Kerr County You're going to watch out for some of those showers. And then, you know, these had just started to pop up right there. And now we've got even a few more around Catula, Carrizo Springs, just a couple of these uh, showers popping up and they will continue to build and some decent downpours associated with those as well. And then here's that one little spot just to the south of Casterville that we are watching as well. Another spot right there in northern Atascosa County. So as the morning rolls on, more of these are going to continue to pop up. And in San Antonio proper, not much is really showing up. There's a little bit of uh, clutter, it looks like, around the, the radar site right there. But again, we'll continue to see a few more of these the, later on this morning as well as later on this afternoon. So a couple of scattered showers and storms here and there. Still potentially some heavy downpours. I mean, all this humidity in there, you're going to get squeezed out. So you could see an inch, inch and a half of rain, maybe more than that in real short period of time. A couple of storms, a few heavy downpours even this afternoon, as well as tomorrow, about the same situation with low 90s. Weekend, mid 90s, going to be hot, going to be very humid. A couple of showers here and there, lesser rain chances this weekend. But then I think we still have some okay you know, slightly better rain chances still sticking around into next week and temperatures in the low 90s much of next week. Good looking forecast. Once again, details in just a few minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, thankfully, the roads here in town look to be dry there. 35 at Ritterman. Let's get a quick look and see what those early bird commuters can expect to, uh, this early in the morning. Not really spotting any issues that are going to hinder that drive. Thankfully, it's all clear. We're seeing 35 at San Marcos. Just some light traffic out there. And as the morning does pick up. We'll continue to talk about some areas where we'll see some road closures, but right now it doesn't look like anything would really cause any delays. So this is going to be pretty quick here because everything looks good. And if you're going to be traveling to the Alamo City, that's the same situation. 23 minutes right now on I-10 traveling in from Bernie to the downtown area. 27 on 281 southbound heading in from Bulverde and a 25 minute drive time on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. Now these three communities did see some pretty big delays yesterday due to some uh, water that was on 281 that led to some lane closures, but it looks like things are a lot better at this hour. So we're going to watch these areas closely. And as I mentioned, we're going to talk some road closures coming up in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a suspect involved in a cutting downtown. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live and Jonathan, do police have any information on the person involved here? Good morning, Stephanie. Well, we're learning that suspect quickly left the scene. Police were hoping to get more information from the victim, but he has not been able to provide much 
of anything. But we do know this all happened last night. We can take a look at what that scene looked like at the intersection of East Travis and North St. Mary's. San Antonio police tell us a man in his late 40s, early 50s, was involved in a fight when the suspect took out some kind of weapon, either a knife or a box cutter and cut the victim in the hand and in the back. Now, Mark, Stephanie, I can tell you right now, Central Patrol, Bike Patrol, and even San Antonio PD's helicopter was all involved in this search effort. But unfortunately, those search efforts were unsuccessful. The search continues. And of course, this case remains under investigation. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. To thank you, a camera caught her punching a pregnant woman. Now that San Antonio police officer has won her job back. Elizabeth Montoya was fired in 2019. During arbitration, she said she was concerned the pregnant woman who was handcuffed might headbutt her and was trying to get the suspect to comply. Montoya described her actions as rabbit punches and not full on haymakers that day. A third party arbitrator ruled she could get her job back. San Antonio City Attorney expressed disappointment in yesterday's ruling and pointed out a new contract between the city and its police officers will place more weight on the chief's discipline decisions. A bully with a badge. That's how former Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela was described during day two of her public corruption trial. Now, the head of organizing security for County Parks told the jury the then constable was aggressive on the phone days before Easter 2019. Jesus Reyes, who rented a pavilion at the park for 15 years, said Barrientes Vela and other uniformed deputies confronted him and his family over paying security while hosting an Easter celebration. The ex-constable's defense team calls the incident a misunderstanding and also says Barrientes Vela had been told Reyes's reservation had been canceled. Now, Barrientes Vela is accused of tampering with security payment logs and turning in false records while under criminal investigation. Testimony continues later this morning. You can watch that trial on KSET.com, KSET Plus, or on the KSET YouTube channel. This morning, more than 40 million Americans could soon see their student loan debt reduced and in many cases erased completely. However, some are calling the plan unfair. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. This morning, financial relief for millions of Americans. President Joe Biden announcing he'll wipe out $10,000 in federal student debt for most borrowers, fulfilling a key campaign promise. The weight was lifted off my shoulders, mostly for my parents because it stresses them out. Loan forgiveness for anyone making less than $125,000 a year or couples making less than $250,000. I feel like it gives a relief for people that actually need it. Biden also canceling up to $20,000 for recipients of Pell Grants, a move the NAACP is praising. There's still more to be done, but this is a great step in the right direction. But not everyone is on board. Why forgive loans that someone is choose knowingly they're signing something saying that I'm taking on this debt I'm responsible for this debt and then complain after they pick a job that doesn't pay their debt Republicans echoing that sentiment Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell calling it a slap in the face to every family who sacrificed to save for college every graduate who paid their debt other critics say the plan will fuel inflation. The White House, though, quick to compare the plan to the financial assistance loans businesses got during the pandemic, many of which were later granted loan forgiveness. 43 million Americans have federal student debt with an average balance of almost 38,000. A third of them owe less than 10 grand. People can start, uh, finally crawl out from under that mountain of debt. I was telling my coworkers, like, hey, look at this. I'm like, free of debt. I'm free of debt. Biden is also extending a pandemic era pause on federal student loan payments until the end of the year for what he called the final time. As for student loan forgiveness, those interested should keep an eye out on the federal student aid website. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. 508, 77 degrees. And a lot of high school football kicking off across the area starting tonight and tomorrow night. We're going to have a preview of all the big games. Outside with live cam, tons of humidity out there. And Mike is tracking a few showers and storms that are starting to pop up. Let's tell you where they are coming up. 512 High School Football is finally back tonight with three games in the San Antonio area. But Friday night is still the main attraction with a whopping 18 games here in town and nine games streaming live on our BGC app. KSAT 12's Andrew Seeley breaks down the three biggest matchups to watch on the app this Friday. 
Brandeis Bronco. O'Connor the next week in the Alamo Dome. Just been excited for that, I'm waiting for that for a while now. It's just more than a game, honestly. It feels it feels like a playoff game. It feels like a championship game, yeah. O'Connor and Brandeis renew one of the best rivalries in the city at the Alamo Dome on Friday night. The Broncos have won seven of their 11 all-time matchups against the Panthers, including the most recent meeting last year, 33-7. The intensity will be even higher this year as both teams feel like they have something to prove. A lot of us that played last year were definitely unhappy with how we finished and we were ready to come back this year and take it all the way. <laughs> to go three and seven, I, I think it, it really affected us and we grew from that. And so as a maturity level, we all, we all kind of uh, grew. Wagner is dropping back down to Class 5A this season. The Thunderbirds open their 2022 campaign with a huge matchup on the road against the Class 5A Division I state runners-up, Liberty Hill. Last but not least, Sotomayor will make history just by taking the field on Friday. The Wildcats will play their first varsity football game against Lee at 7 p.m. We're going to be the very first class. Like it's like the first, we're the first for everything. So it's it's just uh, new and amazing to be here. Sotomayor's first ever season will kick off right here at Ferris Stadium tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But before that, Marshall and MacArthur have first dibs on the field tonight at 7. We'll have the highlights from that one and the rest of opening night of high school football tonight on the night beat. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Andrew Seeley. Andrew, thank you. 514, 77 degrees. And still ahead, details on a new deal between Peloton and Amazon. Plus, first look at brand new versions of Fitbit fitness trackers. Welcome to Allstate, where the safer you drive, the more you save. Like Rachel here. How am I looking? Looking good. The most cautious driver we got. Am I there? No, keep, keep going. How's that? I'll say when. Now, is that good? Lots of cars have backup cameras now, you know. Those are for amateurs. There we go. Like a glove, girl. Safe driving and drive-wise can save you 40% with Allstate. Click or call for a quote today. Ugh-stipated. Feeling weighed down by a backed-up uh. gut. Miralax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. Free your gut and your mood will follow. You go by lots of titles. Veteran, dad, hairstylist. So adding a student title might feel daunting. National University is here to support all your titles. National University, supporting the whole you. In today's Tech Bites, Apple's upcoming launch event. The company has sent out invitations for September 7th. That's when it's expected Apple will reveal four new iPhone models. There's also word the new Apple Watch and AirPod models will be unveiled. Well, you can now buy a Peloton bike on Amazon. The company's original bike is selling for about $1,400. It comes with free in-home delivery and assembly. Amazon is also carrying Peloton fitness equipment and apparel. News of the deal sent Peloton on sagging shares up 20%. And Fitbit has revealed an update to three of its fitness trackers. They range in size, color, and cost. An entry-level tracker has a $100 price tag, while a more advanced version costs $300. All three devices are available for pre-order. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. We were hoping for a much, much better morning on the road. Some commutes yesterday that normally took 20 to 30 yes. minutes were taking 60 to 90 minutes. Yes, uh, my mother actually got on the road and then turned back around. We'll do this <laughs> another time. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, honestly, that would have probably been a great idea, but a lot of people have to head out there, drop the kids off at school, and the commute tends to pick up during the morning. But thankfully, uh, I know that a lot of folks were able to make it to their destination yesterday, but we did have a lot of other issues that popped up on the roads. Right now, things look pretty fine there at 410. You could see Old Pierce all just getting a little bit busier now that we're approaching 530, but uh, just take it easy out there this morning. The roads are dry, but always anytime that we have any situations out there, you just want to drive carefully, taking you right to the map. Nothing to report there, so things look a lot better than what we saw yesterday. Tons of red that we were seeing along 281 as well as 35 here along 35. Also heading into the downtown area, there was a pretty serious crash. Five vehicles, but thankfully no one was hurt. But of course, always just plan your commute ahead of time. We are 
are also looking at some of that road work continuing to take place there off I-35 on the northeast side of San Antonio, striping and barrier work. Now, this is something we told you about at the beginning of the week, but according to TxDOT, part of it will wrap up on Saturday, August 27th. It is overnight, so 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. You have to watch out for those crews during that time because it's still pretty dark out. Multiple lane closures and, entrance, and along with the entrance ramp on I-35 southbound between Judson Road and O'Connor Road. But that information is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. You can head over there for more information. But right now, things look pretty calm, Mike Osterhage. Thanks, but they're starting to pop up. We've got more showers popping up around the area. And I love looking at these pictures. These are just fantastic. Last night in my backyard, I was at just shy of two inches of rain. I'm sure a lot of that came really, really quickly. I keep talking about the airport yesterday morning picked up uh, just almost an inch and a quarter in roughly an hour. So it was coming down in buckets. And as you can see, as this loops back on through the past uh, couple of hours, there was nothing out there uh, except for that one spot out in Junction. And now we are definitely starting to see more of these showers popping up right here down to the uh, southwest. And, it, you know, from almost Uvalde, Catula, they appear to be sitting kind of still, which is not necessarily a good thing because these obviously with the uh, brighter, darker shades of red in there, we are seeing some fairly hefty downpours. So you can get again an inch, inch and a half, two inches of rain in a pretty short period of time. Again, those uh, storms out there are not moving all that quickly, if at all. We've got a couple of more that are popping up right now. They're in northern Atascosa County, and those really aren't moving all that much either. So that's not necessarily a good thing when you get some of these heavier downpours if they just sit still in one spot for a long period. Now, in and around town, there's not much going on as of right now, but we're going to be on the lookout for more of these showers to pop up. So we've got about a 30% chance for showers and thunderstorms around the area this morning. And then I think we see a little bit of a lull in the action once again by late morning. Still a couple of them out there. And then we go into the afternoon hours. I'm going for a 30% chance for a few uh, showers around here. Maybe not as many as yesterday. But again, if you do get one of them, going to have a hefty downpour. 92 for high temperature later on today. So this is the computer model that is kind of picking up on the these morning showers a little bit better and it does have a few more developing as the morning rolls on even moving into town. So just be on the lookout for that. We could I mean, there is the chance we could have a repeat of what we had yesterday if this model does uh, hold true. A couple of other ones don't have as much as far as rain this morning, but they do have more showers popping up here later on this afternoon. This one tends to take everything and move it on out by the afternoon hours a little bit more in the way of sunshine. So I think we still have, again, a couple of those showers later on today. But that slightly more slightly more sunshine will get us up to 92 as opposed to yesterday's 90. 85 today at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. And then later on this afternoon, again, a few showers, a few thunderstorms, enough sunshine just to get us up to 92 degrees. Still three below normal. And again, you could see some hefty downpours with any of these storms that pop up. 94 tomorrow, so we're going to start to go up a couple of notches here. 95s over the weekend going into Monday. Really hot, really humid, although normal high temperatures right there. A stray shower or two and then temperatures kind of shave off a couple of degrees. Rain chances go up ever so slightly going into the middle part of next week again. We've had just enough rain yep. that the grass in my front yard has is now two inches taller just this week. Aww. The parts that <laughs> in my yard that aren't brown mm -hmm. right. are growing nicely. So this, it, it'll be like weed eater type stuff. But <laughs> again, for this morning, just watch out for some of those uh, those spots that where the you know storms are starting to build a little bit, some right. heavy downpours, because things aren't moving that much this morning. Just know it could happen. Yeah. yeah, well, watch out for it. Thanks, Mike. 523, 77 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, Shazam and Aquaman sequels get delayed, plus your first look at Empire of Light. 526 fans of two big screen superheroes will have to wait a little bit longer to see them fly and swim on the big screen again. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. <laughs> That's crazy, right? What are your superpowers? Superpowers, dude, I don't even know how to pee in this thing. Even the mighty powers of Shazam couldn't keep him on this year's release calendar. Warner Brothers has bumped the sequel, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, from this December to next March 17th. That was the release date of the Aquaman sequel, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So that film floats to Christmas Day 2023. Phil. It's just... 
static frames. This film has quite a pedigree. Here's the first teaser trailer for Empire of Light, starring Oscar winners Olivia Colman and Colin Firth and BAFTA award winner Michael Ward. Behind the camera, Oscar-winning cinematographer Roger Deakins and Oscar-winning director Sam Mendes. Empire of Light reaches theaters December 9th. It's been a bloody 24 hours. More than a million people die in traffic-related crashes worldwide each year. It's really a big problem. Half of those deaths involve pedestrians and cyclists. The Street Project is a documentary about a group by the same name, a global movement to make streets and communities safer. The film looks at how automobiles have changed how we use streets and what the U.S. can learn from changes other countries have made. The Street Project premieres today on Prime Video in the U.S. and on PBS International. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 77 degrees. And still ahead while we are enjoying some much needed rain, some parts of the country are seeing too much. We're going to tell you where flooding is becoming a big problem. And rent with rent rising across the country, the Bear County Sheriff's Office hosting a special eviction prevention clinic. We'll have details. And are you ready for a new pet at home? That's the San Antonio Humane Society coming up. Heavy rain is causing major flooding concerns in parts of the Deep South, something that hasn't been seen since Hurricane Katrina. And taking a look outside with live cam, we can expect showers here or there a little bit today. Right now, we're at 77 degrees. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, August 25th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been nice to have this rain, and it's been nice to kind of be in the 90s at the high point of the day. That's true. A nice change from July, Mike. It oh, continues. Yeah, indeed. Uh, except, you know, obviously we have a lot of humidity to deal with, but it is more tolerable when we're in the low 90s. But uh, just get used to the humidity because it is definitely going to be sticking around. Nice thing is it's getting squeezed out. So, yes, we are getting some, uh, some beautiful rain. And we're also seeing more rain right now on top of that. There's that dew point at 74, which means you walk outside your glass is going to be fogging up. It kind of pushes back at you. I guess the best way to describe it. 78 right now. So we are about uh, four degrees or so above normal. Here's what's going on on radar. And uh, we still got that uh, cluster of storms out here in northern portions of the hill country right there in northeastern Edwards County. And even a couple of a uh, couple of uh, shower, a couple of uh, lightning strikes are being detected with that as well. But then down here to the uh, southwest and in northeastern Zavala County. These showers and uh, well, no thunderstorms as of yet, but those are just kind of sitting still as of right now. And to check what's going on as far as rainfall rates, this is what we're going to have to watch out for because this is coming down at a pretty good clip right there. These uh, some of these cells are producing rainfall rates at about uh, well, that one's only three tenths or about a third of an inch per hour, but we've got some that are a little bit heavier. And around here, one and a third inches per hour. So that now doesn't mean you'll get an inch and a third inch and a half of rain, but it's just coming down very quickly. Plus, those things are sitting still in just about one spot, and that's what we're kind of raising a bit of concern. Plus, you picked up a lot of rain yesterday in portions of Zavala County. Uh, 13,120 mold is very, very high. And throughout the rest of today, we'll have a couple of those showers and thunderstorms this morning. 81 degrees, 85 at noon, and then 92 for high temperature today. So just a couple of notches above yesterday, and we'll still have uh, one or two of those storms out there. I don't think quite as many as yesterday, but still, if you get one or two of them, you're going to get some pretty hefty downpours. We're going to keep an eye on those cells that are popping up there in Zavala County and also see what's ahead for tomorrow as well as the weekend that's coming up. Traffic Authority, anything going on yet, sir? It's been quiet, Mike. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a stall there, a 410 at Crossroads. Wanted to bring that image to our friends uh, that are still at home because uh, really this is just kind of smack down in the middle. You have to watch out there. 410 tends to pick up a little bit later, and this is right near uh, the Trans Guide offices, actually. So they're able to see that uh, and make sure that you watch out for any stalled vehicles out there as well. Pretty dark yet still, so you have to watch for any hero trucks that may be working to assist those drivers. But right now, it looks like traffic is moving without any trouble. Hopefully that person gets the help that they need there. But 
but as we take you to the map, nothing major to report just yet, but I am noticing just a little bit north uh, right near 1604 281 looks like a crash may have popped up. I'll check that out in momentarily and find out how exactly that's going to impact the drive time. But right now, really nothing is going to slow drivers down, especially if they're going to be traveling into the Alamo City 37 heading in those northbound lanes. It's a 28 minute drive time about half an hour on Highway 90 traveling in the eastbound lanes coming in from Castroville and the arrival from Lytle about 17 minutes at this hour on I 35 northbound. No worries there and hopefully we'll have a better update here at 410 at Crossroads. We'll also find out how that crash is impacting traffic over on the north side. Guys. Stephen, thank you. Today, the trial of former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela continues later this morning. Yesterday, she was described as the bully with a badge during day two of her public corruption trial. Jonathan Cotto is live with the latest. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. And that's exactly right. That's how a former constable was described as a bully with a badge. We can take a look at those moments during day two of this public corruption trial. We know the head of organizing security for County Parks told the jury that then constable was aggressive on the phone days before Easter 2019. Jesus Reyes, who rented a pavilion at the park for 15 years, said Barrientes Vela and other uninformed deputies confronted him and his family over paying security while hosting an Easter celebration. She told me it's uh, better in my interest to pay up the money. That's, those were her words. Say that again? It was in my best interest to pay up the money. The ex-constable's defense team caused the incident a misunderstanding and also says Barrientes Vela has been told Reyes' reservation had been canceled. Barrientes Vela is accused of tampering with security payment logs and turning in false records while under criminal investigation. Mark, Stephanie, this testimony will continue later this morning. You can watch that trial by tuning into our website, ksat.com, heading on over to KSAT Plus, and of course, our KSAT YouTube channel. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. A flash flood emergency is unleashing life-threatening conditions across parts of the country. One mayor saying the rain in the city has far exceeded the levels they saw during Hurricane Katrina. CNN's Cole Higgins has the latest. I haven't seen it come up like this this quick. An emergency evacuation at a nursing home just outside of Jackson, Mississippi, triggered by rapidly rising floodwaters. The water came up, residents were flooded in. We got everybody out and that's the most important thing. Yeah. So everybody's safe. We got all the staff and the residents out. We can replace the stuff, yeah. but the people are out. So that's a good thing. Rising waters turning roads into rivers across parts of the state. These people go to drive through these, these low-lying areas. It may not be up into a home yet, but the wave that you create, mm -hmm. you may have just created tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage to these people's home, needlessly. Fast-moving floodwaters have destroyed a large chunk of the highway in Newton County and saturated ground under train tracks giving way, causing cars full of carbon dioxide to roll off the rails and into a 20-foot ditch. Our cars are damaged, houses are damaged, and everything. We had to pack up, get out the house, the rescue team came and put us on the boat. Now, emergency officials warned the threat from heavy, relentless rains is far from over. We've still got a tremendous amount of rain to go. I was talking with the National Weather Service before I came up here this morning, and uh, he said even tomorrow we could have two to four more inches on top of what we had today. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. The Biden administration taking another step to try to preserve the Obama era deferred action for childhood arrivals program, also known as DACA, allows certain undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children to remain and work in the country. Over the years, the program has protected more than 800,000 of those immigrants known as dreamers from deportation. On Wednesday, the Department of Homeland Security announced the finalized rule, which replaces the Obama era memo that introduced DACA in 2012. It aims to continue the original DACA policy and takes effect on October 31st. In a statement, President Biden called on congressional Republicans to, quote, stop blocking a bill that provides a pathway to citizenship for dreamers, end quote. The Department of Homeland Security's Disinformation Board has officially been disbanded. The board was originally intended to coordinate the department's activities related to disinformation aimed at the U.S. public, but there was intense backlash that forced it to be put on hold back in May. Nina Jankowicz, an expert on Russian disinformation, resigned at that time because the future of the board seemed uncertain. Several lawmakers accused her of being biased because of her past tweets on Hunter Biden's laptop and the discredited Steele dossier. California is expected to ban new gasoline car sales by 2035. Regulators will vote on the measure today. 
If it passes, it would be the first such ban worldwide. The vote comes after the state's governor signed an executive order in 2020 mandating all vehicles sold in the state must be zero emissions by 2035. The state got a boost from the Biden administration, which earlier this year reinstated California's ability to set its own vehicle emission standards. The measure would not impact used gasoline cars. For now, they would be allowed to stay on the roads. And time now, 539 and 77 degrees for now. Next, the housing market may be slowing down, but rent keep rising. What you can do, plus details on the local eviction prevention clinic happening later today. And taking a look outside with live cam, pretty quiet in the shop. We're starting at a humid 77 degrees. Uh, there will be some rain in some areas throughout the day, but not as much as we got earlier in the week. We'll be right back. 542 traffic and weather coming up. Rents are surging from coast to coast, forcing tenants to make difficult decisions. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, a recent report found more than half of surveyed renters saw a rent increase in the past 12 months. If your rent is going up, you're not alone. Despite new data showing the housing market appears to be slowing, rents are still high and soaring across the country. Yeah, I pay it every month. I don't pay it on time. I pay it when I get it. <laughs> A recent survey by housing lender Freddie Mac found nearly 60% of renters saw a rent increase during the past year, while just 38% of renters say they saw their income go up. There's times when I get nervous too because I have to prioritize, you know. Rent's going up for the same reasons that everything is getting more expensive. There's just more money flowing around in the economy from the lax monetary policy of the last two years, and that is coming home to roost. Meanwhile, a report out this week shows new home sales fell by 12.6% in July from the previous month. That's according to data released by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and the U.S. Census Bureau, which points to rising housing prices and rising mortgage rates for the recent decline in sales. We don't have enough home Homes in this country. So people are scrambling to find open apartments. Apartment rents are going up and it's just really difficult for anybody who's trying to make ends meet. Daryl Fairweather, chief economist at Redfin, says there are some places where rent increases are starting to slow, including some major cities like San Francisco. People aren't going to tolerate those kind of rent increases. With remote work, they're going to pack up and go somewhere else where their money can get them further. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. And today, Sheriff Javier Salazar and the Bear County Sheriff's Office will be hosting an eviction prevention clinic at the Bear County Elections Office. So that is located at 1103 South Rio Street. Now the clinic starts at 6.30 p.m. Community partners will provide attendees with useful information regarding unlawful landlord actions, rights you have as a tenant, and helpful information on rental and utility assistance. For more information, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. 544, 77 degrees. And coming up next, we're going to check in with the San Antonio Humane Society and a precious pet. There you go. Kim is here from the, I love the little, the little spots on her nose there, and Kim's here from markings. the San Antonio Humane Society, oh, no. and the, who's this little girl? This little girl is Sandy. Hi, uh, Sandy is a two-month-old little terrier mix. She's got the softest fur. She is soft. She's just kind of content, was making her sweet little puppy noises. So, um, but, and she's all wrapped up in a towel, but she could lay no, in this she neat could lay in this bed. little bed. Yeah. Should we yes, give it a try? You want, let's you want try. Give it a little see. test drive there? And oh, oh look, yeah, it's comfy. And the reason why you see? have this bed is the reason why I have this bed is we have these for sale um, at our shelter at the Humane Society. So you can purchase one of these. They're made by a volunteer, and um, all the proceeds come back to us. So that's amazing. She spends her time. Um, we do need donations though, because with these pet beds, um, we need pillow stuffings, uh, blankets, fabric, anything that you can you have. You can drop them off at our location. So even just a pillow, and then they can just. Take the yes, stuffing out. Yep, or, exactly. Yeah. Just a pillow. Or if you want to, <laughs> she's all cuddly in here. <laughs> or if you want to, you could go online um, through our Amazon wish list too. Okay. So choose to do that. And this is a, quite a nice price for this bed because you'd pay yes. a lot more retail yes, for, yes, to, yes. Right, at a store. Yep, so. Really great price. Is it comfy? <laughs> I'm I think she's snuggle. happy with it. So. Say, I love this bed. Yes. Well, if you'd like him for <laughs> 
Well, it's like a little queen being hauled it around is. here. So she's like, who's going to take me? So I say, uh, Where yes, am I, I going? Do that. Yeah. Anyway, now I'm stuck for the day. Uh, 48 to 4, Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 is the number to call. Oh, thank yeah, you, dear. Thank you. It's like Mike's turned into the puppy butler. <laughs> Where would you like to your go? Your puppy, ma'am. Dog was comfy in that bed. Yeah. I, know. I love it. So cute. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 549. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Fur looks soft too, so yeah. all right. Hopefully she finds a home. All right, let's get a quick look around town. 37 at Indian Hills. Really uh, not seeing a lot of traffic out there. 1604 at Spurs Ranch. It's getting a little bit busy, though. I mean, we know some areas are going to pick up as the morning commute does get rolling and as we approach 6 a.m., but other areas, it's still pretty quiet. 410 at Harry Wurzbach, it does look like that's one of those spots where traffic is already starting to get going there. But one of the things we want to bring your attention to is going to be over here. This is off Loop 1604 in the westbound lanes. This is actually reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. Now, not sure exactly what the conditions look like in this hour. 281 over here on the north side, there are a few trans guide cameras that you usually work. Some of them don't, so we'll have to get them on the phone and find out exactly if we can actually get a shot of the conditions out there. But regardless, watch out if you see those flashing lights out there. Giving you that bird's eye view of the metro area, just a lot of green on the screen, which is great news, but we know things are going to be a little bit different as the day does roll on, especially along 281. There is a lot of work that continues to take place. And overnight, starting tomorrow, actually on Friday, August 26, we'll continue to see the bridge work out there. Eight in the evening at five in the morning is when you can expect those crews to have a full closure of the intersection right there at Overlook Parkway. But you know that information is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. Just scroll to the bottom of the page, but check out 37 at Fair Avenue. Definitely picking up, but we're going to be watching these roads closely. Mike, definitely a different morning as what we saw yesterday. Yes, here in town, of course, things really got going as we approach, say, 6 and 7 o'clock yesterday morning, and we're still seeing uh, some of those showers develop. And yeah, after uh, some of the rain yesterday, we had a nice little rainbow out there. Beautiful picture. Thank you very much for that one, Mr. McClellan over there at Woodlawn Lake. Okay, so here's what's going on on radar. And what's interesting to uh, point out, first of all, down here to the southwest, these cells which have been developing there uh, down around Catula, Dilly, and especially that one I was kind of worried about there in northeastern Zavala County. It's now starting to almost, I don't want to say fizzle out, but it was really dumping a lot of rain. Rainfall rates were close to three, four inches per hour, and now it is sort of uh, easing up a little bit, but we still have plenty more rain down to the south in and around Catula, and you've had enough of it in the past few days. And then further on up to the north, this one cell right here in northern Atascosa County continues to kind of work its way down to the uh, southwest. Got a couple more off here just to the east of uh, Floresville, uh, Quero. You're getting a lot of rain northwest of Yorktown. Again, some fairly decent downpours around here. And then further up in portions of the uh, hill country, still got that cell up there in northeastern Edwards County. And that's still, again, dumping some uh, pretty good rain. You can see with that darker shade of red right there. So it's moving along. But, you know, that's the problem. If it sits still, at least that is moving along fairly well. But just watch out for some of those heavier downpours. Mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning, 30% chance for a couple of those stray showers here and there. And that's going to be the case even going into late morning, maybe sort of easing up a little bit like yesterday, 85 at noon. And then rain chances will pick back up with the afternoon heating. We're going to make it up to a 92 for high temperature later on today. Here's the rapid update computer model, and it does initialize with some of those showers down there to the uh, southwest of us and keeps those around throughout the rest of the morning. Doesn't have anything in and around the metropolitan area. We got to be on the lookout for that. But then later on this afternoon, this is the one that then gets a little bit more rain fired up as we go into the late afternoon hours. Just a couple of those stray showers here and there. So that's what we'll be kind of watching out for later on today. Again, 30% chance for some of that rain. 85 at noon Again, still a couple of leftover showers and thunderstorms. Primarily, it looks like uh, down to the south and then one or two of them here and there. Lesser chance than yesterday, uh, lesser coverage, but if you get one of those showers, could have heavy downpours, 92 high temperature, 94 tomorrow, and then lesser chances of rain over the weekend. It's gonna be hot and humid, 95s, about normal this time of year, and then back down to the, uh, the low 90s. One thing, big reminder, I was driving home yesterday mm -hmm. and there was some lightning off in the distance. There were still people on the golf course at Brackenridge. Oh, yeah. Anywhere there is lightning, even within 25, 30 miles, it, it's a dangerous situation. Yes, yeah. sir. Sure.
And I'm going to thank you, Mike. 553, 77 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 620, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 3438, Fireball 1. Cash 5 numbers 113, 16, 25, 32. Lotto Texas 2, 5, 24, 29, 38, 53. And Powerball 6, 24, 35, 37, 44. Powerball 22, Power Play 4. Good luck from everybody at GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are following a breaking news overnight that Uvalde Police Chief Pete Arredondo has been fired. So what's next for the grieving families demanding more justice, some planning a $27 billion lawsuit? And then while many are celebrating after President Biden's student loan forgiveness announcement, some are calling the move unfair. We're going to have the latest on that fallout. Those stories and so much more right here on Good Morning America. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA President Biden granting student loan forgiveness, making good on a campaign promise, but who qualifies? The answer is coming up. And the decision has been made. Pete Arredondo out as police chief of Uvalde's school district. We have more on last night's meeting. Trans guide right now. We're hoping for a much better commute. Things got awful yesterday. Uh, we'll get an update on how things are looking on the roads with Stephen, and we'll also check on Mike's forecast. He is tracking a few storms out there right now. We'll be back. Pete Arredondo, no longer the police chief for Uvalde CISD. The school board making the decision last night. We have reaction from Uvalde residents, including the family of some of those that were killed in the deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. And taking a look outside with live cam, no rain in this shot. However, we are expecting a few more showers here and there. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Thursday, August 25th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a wonderful week. It's 6 a.m. Go ahead and grab that extra cup of coffee, maybe an iced coffee, a little humid out there. Yeah, definitely humid out there. It's, uh, as Mike would agree, it's very hard to predict the when and where of these showers and storms. Mike, it joins us now. Yeah, and we're going to have a few more later on this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be quite as widespread as yesterday. I mean, there's still going to be a few of them. You still got to watch out for some of those hefty downpours. I mean, a lot of folks have been sending in pictures where they picked up, you know, inch, inch and a half, two inches of rain in maybe an hour. That was the situation yesterday at the airport in the morning when those heavy storms moved on through and officially yesterday out there at the airport picked up an inch and a half, which I mean, just wonderful numbers. We're getting some as of right now. It's been kind of developing as the morning has been uh, rolling on out there to northwest portions of the hill country. A couple of lightning strikes here and there, and these have been sort of drifting down to the uh, south, so northern Real County and just kind of right there along the Real Edwards County line. Again, a few decent downpours. They are moving along. The uh, showers right there in northeastern Zavala County, they were really starting to develop, had rainfall rates of about three, four inches per hour. Now those have started to sort of uh, subside ever so slightly, but then you go down toward Catula and still got some uh, fairly decent rain. And this is on top of where you've already had some. So in some areas, the ground is... I can't believe I'm using this word saturated from some of this rain. It hasn't really soaked in all that much. So we are going to see some runoff. If you get those showers that don't move and those really hefty downpours that uh, sell up there in northwestern Atascosa County, kind of dying off. Same thing there in Wilson County, nothing in and around the uh, metropolitan area. Other than that, as of right now, mold's very, very high. No surprise there. It went up yesterday from even the previous day's reading, 13,120. And throughout the rest of the morning, we'll have just a couple of showers, maybe a thunderstorm uh, here and there, primarily down to the southwest. That's where the majority are. We'll stay in the mid and upper 70s around here. A lot of humidity. You can pretty much cut the humidity with a knife. Mid 80s at noon. Again, a few showers here and there, and then one or two. And we'll put about a 30% chance on rain later on this afternoon. 92 for high temperature, so we will be just a couple of notches above yesterday's 90. Still slightly below normal. Same situation tomorrow. Lesser rain chances, almost nil over the weekend, but it is going to be hotter over the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Not a whole lot over here, Mike. Thankfully, roads are pretty dry there at 410 at Old Pearsall. Let's get a wider look and see what drivers can expect this early in the morning. Thankfully, the commute looks pretty easy. I mean, really nothing that's going to slow these drivers down at this point, but always make sure you follow the speed limit. We know the traffic is picking up there at US 90. A couple is one of the busier spots, but elsewhere, 281 at St. Mary's, it does look 
look like it's flowing quite nicely. So that's great news. But around this time, a little bit closer to seven, as Mike was mentioning, we did have a few issues on the road yesterday that definitely stuck around for quite a while. Still also have that stall at 410 at Crosswoods. Watch out there. But taking you to the map right now, our big issue is going to be here off 1604 Redland. Now, typically, trans guide cameras are along here along 281. But in this particular stretch of 1604, unfortunately, we're not able to show those conditions out there. But what we can tell you based on the map is that this is in the westbound lanes and we're not seeing a buildup in this direction, so it is still pretty green. Watch out though for those first responders if your travels are going to take you in that direction. Giving you a wide view of the map, it's the same situation we've been showing you throughout the morning. Just a lot of quiet roads, but roads will tend to pick up as the commute does get rolling. And if you were going to be heading into San Antonio, don't rush out the door just yet. 29 minutes, I-10 in the westbound lanes. Traveling in from Seguin, you're still in the green. 33 minutes on 87 northbound, heading in from Lavernia, and it's a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Flotusville. So uh, again, no need to rush if you will plan on hitting the roads in the next few minutes or so, but we're going to watch these areas closely and again, have more updates on some closures you need to be aware of in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. In this morning's top stories, Uvalde CISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo has been fired. This coming three months to the day of the horrific shooting that left 19 children and two teachers dead. The school board made the decision behind closed doors last night, and as our Lee Waldman reports, it was many, it's what many families in Uvalde wanted, but it didn't make anyone happy. Families have been calling for accountability and transparency for three months. Ardondo was placed on administrative leave nearly a month after this shooting, at first with pay and then without. In July, the district made moves toward his termination, but that was twice delayed at the request of Ardondo's attorney. Before Wednesday night's announcement was made about his termination status, the families held their own meeting. The cause exists to terminate the non-certified contract of Pete Adelongo effective immediately. All in favor? Motion passes unanimously. No applause or cheers from the families in mourning at the news of Pete Arredondo's termination. Instead, they quickly filed out of the auditorium, holding pictures of the ones they love. It took three months to get him fired. This should have been done right day one. from day one, from it, the beginning. On this three month anniversary of the shooting, families took control of the board meeting, talking about their loved ones as the board met in private. Love his brothers and his sisters. And every morning he made sure to tell me he loved me before he went to school. He loved hanging out with his mom and making TikToks and <laughs> Snapchat videos. I'm Xavier's mom. I miss my best friend. Children, some survivors from Robb Elementary, using their young voices to call for action, accountability. I have messages for PR and other law enforcement that were there that day. Turn in your badge and stand down. We don't deserve to wear one. To change enough is enough, and we need to change the gun laws to 23 so people that are young, they will not have to buy a gun. A moment of joy as well. AJ Martinez, another survivor from 112, celebrating his birthday with his new family. A family connected by tragedy, bonded in strength. Happy birthday, dear AJ. Happy birthday. Noticeably missing from Wednesday night's meeting was Arredondo and his attorney. They sent a statement to the district board just before 5 o'clock, saying in part, quote, Arredondo argues his safety and that of his attorney could be at risk tonight and quote Chief Arredondo will not participate in his own illegal and unconstitutional public lynching and respectfully request the board immediately reinstate him with all back pay and quote the board voted to ratify Arredondo's leave without pay and Uvalde Lee Waldman for GMSA. And happening today, we will have a live online chat on school safety. That's on the Solutionaries YouTube channel at 7 o'clock this evening. We will have a former Secret Service agent answering your questions. You can send those questions by visiting that website on your screen. Solutionariesnetwork.com. To submit your question, click on the Questions tab. New this morning, a fight between two men downtown ends when one of them allegedly pulled a knife. San Antonio police say the altercation happened at the intersection of North St. Mary's and East Travis Streets. They say the fight escalated when one of the men pulled out a knife and used it to cut the other on the hand and back. 
The suspect took off. The victim was taken to a hospital with non life threatening injuries. Central and bike patrol along with Eagle helicopter searched for the suspect but were unable to find him. And we have an update on the efforts of a San Antonio police officer to get her job back after being caught on camera punching a pregnant woman. That officer has won her job back. Elizabeth Montoya was fired back in 2019 and during arbitration she said she was concerned the pregnant woman who was handcuffed might headbutt her and was trying to get the suspect to comply. Montoya described her actions as rabbit punches and not full on haymakers that day. A third party arbitrator ruled she could get her job back. San Antonio City Attorney expressed disappointment in today's ruling and pointed out a new contract between the city and its police officers will place more weight on the chief's discipline decisions. Just about 6.09, we turn now to a major legal victory for the widow of former NBA star Kobe Bryant in her fight over graphic photos from the day of his death. ABC's Rihanna Nally has a story. Overnight closure for Kobe Bryant's family after a years-long legal battle with Los Angeles County. A jury unanimously deciding the county should be held responsible for first responders who took unnecessary and graphic photos of the fiery helicopter crash that killed Bryant, along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, and seven others. Officials defended taking the photos, claiming they were for official documentation. But during the 11-day trial, one sheriff's deputy admitted showing the images to people at a bar. Bryant took the stand last week, arguing the photos added to the grief of losing her husband and daughter, saying, I trusted them not to do these things. My husband and daughter deserve dignity, adding, they violated her, taking advantage of the fact her daddy couldn't protect her. He was at the morgue. It took the jury four hours to reach the verdict. A tearful Bryant listened as it was read. She was awarded $16 million for invasion of privacy and the emotional distress caused by the knowledge that firefighters and paramedics were showing pictures of the crash, including close-up images of Kobe's body. And Chris Chester, who also lost his spouse and daughter in the crash, was awarded $15 million. Bryant praised the decision on Instagram, posting a photo of Kobe and Gianna along with the caption, all for you, I love you, justice for Kobe and Gigi. Lawyers for the county released a statement after the verdict saying, while we disagree with the jury's findings as to the county's liability, we believe the monetary award shows that jurors didn't believe the evidence supported the plaintiff's request of $75 million for emotional distress. Last year, Los Angeles County paid $2.5 million to two other families who lost loved ones in that crash. Rihanna Nally, ABC News, New York. 611, 77 degrees. And still to come on DMSA, we're going to have the details on the Peloton products you can now buy on Amazon. A major milestone in the recovery of popular tourism spot along the Texas Gulf Coast. We're in Rockport five years after Hurricane Harvey devastated that city. And taking a look outside with a live cam, Mike says you can expect maybe a shower here or there, but if you do get a shower, it might be a heavy downpour, so watch out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to just about 615. Today marks five years since Hurricane Harvey made landfall along the Texas coastline. This morning we're showing you how things are now and how far residents have come. Businesses have returned to Rockport. The power of Harvey either wiped out or severely damaged structures, forcing some to close. But a strong sign of vitality in the town lies in the small bait shops. Business owners have learned firsthand how strong their own determination to survive and thrive is. We had Harvey, then we had the pandemic, which shut us down also. And then we had a freeze a couple of years ago that shut us down. So it's been one thing after another. While the drought and even inflation has affected the shops, not to mention the pandemic, they're still open and welcoming customers. Coming up today on KSAT 12 News at 5 and 6, our Courtney Freeman taking us back to school in both Rockport and Port Aransas. Both school districts were completely shut down after Hurricane Harvey. We'll show you how far they have come in five years' time. 
And possible good news for city employees, a pay increase could be on the way. The city did a market analysis to figure out where its pay stacked up. And it's a first since 2008. San Antonio City employees are looking at between 7 and 20 percent more pay under the proposed budget. In all, the pay bumps could cost an extra $53 million. The city also plans to boost its minimum hour hourly wage up to $17.50. Council is expected to pass a final budget mid-September. Time check 616. Let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, we have better news here. We had a stall off 410 at Crossroads. That is now cleared out. Actually, those first responders, those hero trucks were out there working to assist the driver. Looks like they got that situation under control and traffic's moving through there without any trouble. But we are still seeing that traffic uh, issue here off of 1604 in the westbound lanes. Our map cleared it out, but just a few moments ago, I checked the TxDOT site. It is still being reported out there. So unfortunately, as I mentioned throughout the morning, there are no trans guide cameras in this particular stretch of road here, but we are going to have to watch it very closely and give you those updates, uh, but doesn't look like it's causing any issues. Wide view of the map looks like it's the same situation we've been showing you for the last few hours or so, just some quiet roadways, uh, but always be careful and plan your commute ahead of time. State Highway 181 here in Bear County. Road repairs will continue to take place up until Friday, August 26, 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon is when you can expect alternating lane closures in both directions from I-37 to the Wilson County line, but you know where to find that information. It's over at KSAT.com slash traffic, but traffic right here at 410 at Crossroads moving just fine and really quick want to wish my niece Emma a happy birthday. She's one year old today. I don't even know if she's watching this early in the morning, uh, but another birthday in the Osterhage family, I understand. Yeah, happy birthday to your oh, niece you. and my dad, 95 today. It's, it's like you're there, Mike. I know, I know. It is, I, I love that. I, 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 I kind of hold her hands. My sister just took oh. a picture a couple of How old's ago. Pop? 95. Wow. Happy birthday. My mom will be 96 uh, come the end of December. Wow. So all things considered, they're still doing awesome. pretty darn good. Yeah, they are. Happy birthday, Happy Dad. birthday, Dad. Yeah. Love birthday. you both. Love the pick with you there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I, I didn't even think about that when I posted it. All right, we've got still a few showers and uh, even a couple of thunderstorms. There hasn't been a whole lot of lightning around the area so far this morning. Down here to the uh, southeast, as you can see in portions of uh, Wilson County, we've got almost a line that's now starting to, to develop from Floresville back over toward uh, Quero, Yorktown. And this is all sort of drifting down to the uh, south a little bit and a few decent downpours. All of these uh, kind of reddish spots, you're looking at rain fall rates roughly two inches per hour doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be getting that much rain, but you can get some hefty downpours with some of these showers as long as they move and these are moving somewhat, but not really at a real fast clip. This cell right there or that little spot of rain right there um, in northeastern Atascosa County is kind of fizzling on out and then we still have some of these showers down here to the uh, southwest and this is a pretty decent cell right here around Catula and again, some of those red areas are producing rain at roughly uh, two, maybe close to three inches per hour. Out here in portions of the hill country, then again, we've got this cell right there, which is moving into northern uh, Real County as well as Edwards County. So that one we'll keep an eye on too. So just kind of scattered about, and that's uh, the 30% chance of rain around here this morning. Temperatures stay in the mid upper 70s throughout the rest of the morning hours. 85 at noon, somewhat lesser chance for some rain. And then we'll make it up to 92 today. 30% chance for a shower, thunderstorm around here. I don't think quite the coverage as yesterday, but still a few of them, still a couple of decent downpours. This particular computer model is picking up uh, some of these showers and storms down to the southwest. And then later on this afternoon, this is the one that uh, does have a couple of more showers popping up. Not really, like I said, a heck of a lot, even a little bit of sunshine thrown on in here. But again, any of these storms that do pop up could uh, give you some pretty hefty downpours. All right, as far as today 85 at noon a couple of showers a couple of thunderstorms around same thing then later on this afternoon 92 high temperature so just a couple of degrees above yesterday's 90 by the way once again yesterday we picked up 1.5 inches of rain out there at the airport which was wonderful news and 94 tomorrow 95 saturday sunday monday a stray shower may pop up here or there, but then slightly better chances of rain uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. One note to our five year anniversary coverage of Hurricane Harvey. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Horn is going to be down there along the coast later on today. So remember covering that quite well. And, and even, you know, a lot of places like Port Aransas, we were just down there a few months ago. 
um, like the Port Royal uh, condominium complex hotel, mm -hmm. that was severely damaged and yeah. they haven't built that back completely. A lot of it, it has come back quite nicely, but there's still some, uh, some signs of that storm from five years ago. Absolutely are. Yeah, a lot of changes there. Mm -hmm. Thank right. you, Mike. We'll look for Justin live in our later newscast right now, 620, 77 degrees. And just ahead, the hype is building as Apple officially sets the date to reveal its iPhone 14. And watch, we're going to tell you the, about the big reveal and when it's going to take place. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. In this morning's GMA First Look, the pastor arrested for watering his neighbor's flowers, speaking out. I ain't did nothing suspicious or nothing wrong. I told him I'm a pastor. I passed into our heat. You want to lock me up? Lock me up. New police body camera video capturing the tense moments when Alabama pastor Michael Jennings was approached by police. At the time, Jennings doing a favor for an out of town neighbor and watering their plants with permission. The pastor telling his story first on GMA. You know, to be shackled and to have your freedom taken away from you, you know, it, it's something else. It's uh, dehumanizing. And I thought, you know, why would they be doing this? It's something that it gives you nightmares. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of our exclusive interview and what the Childersburg Police Department is saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Annally, ABC News, New York. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's upcoming launch event, the company has sent out invitations for September 7th. That's when it's expected Apple will reveal four new iPhone models. It's also word the new Apple Watch and AirPod models will be unveiled. You can now buy a Peloton bike on Amazon. The company's original bike is selling for about $1,400, and it comes with free in-home delivery and assembly. Amazon is also carrying Peloton fitness equipment and apparel. News of the deal sent Peloton's sagging shares up 20%. Fitbit has revealed an update to three of its fitness trackers. They range in size, color, and cost. The entry-level tracker has a $100 price tag, while a more advanced version costs $300. All three will be available for pre-order soon. And time now, 626 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead in the next half hour, GMSA, a story of perseverance, how a Southside man has been able to reopen his daycare, devastated by a massive fire. Past actions of embattled former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela taking center stage in court. We're going to have the latest on the trial after the break. And we'll check back in with Stephen Cavazzo as we check the morning commute 410 at Crossroads. Lots of traffic in both directions, but it's still moving great right now. We'll be back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. It's a wrap for day two of the public corruption trial for former Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. Coming up on GMSA, we'll share what we know of that trial. Outside with live cam, showers and storms were in the area off and on throughout the day yesterday. What about your Thursday? Mike Oster Hage will have more in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to the day before Friday. It is August 25th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and happy Friday, Junior, if you will. We're almost there and we've had a you know pretty easy week as far as the temperatures. I mean, it's not triple digits. That's true. And the rain chances have continued. It's just kind of a scattershot all over the place. Yeah, you know, yesterday, right around midday, things started to, to taper a little bit. We still had a couple of those showers and thunderstorms and they started to fire up in some areas again in the afternoon yesterday, and that's going to be the situation today. Nothing's going on out there as of right now, so a quieter commute here in town, obviously compared to um, what we had yesterday morning. 78 degrees, we are still uh, about four, almost five degrees above the normal average high temperature this time of year, and that number, dew point of 74, means 
you walk outside from air conditioning, your glasses are probably going to be fogging up and it feels like a wet towel out there. So we do have again more scattered showers here and there. A couple of them out there in portions of the hill country down to the southwest. Notice this line, which is developing from about Floresville back to the east in toward Quero and Victoria. That has been holding together from earlier this morning. It did produce some flooding rain up there just around Junction, and now this continues down into eastern Edwards County. Some decent downpours, but it is moving at a fairly decent clip, so it's not just sitting in one spot. Still got some pretty good rain down to the south of Catula and then heading up to the sort of north and west from there, but those uh, cells are also moving at a fairly decent rate, and that one spot spot there in northern Atascosa County that has all but uh, sort of fizzle on out. But here's these uh, showers once again right there right around Floresville. So again, scattered about here and there. Just keep your rain gear handy because, you, you know, it's one of those like we were talking about scatter shot as far as popping up later on this afternoon. Mold is on the high side 13 120 updated counts going to come out in a couple of hours. Scattered showers, maybe a storm or two this morning here and there. A few scattered showers around. I don't think quite as widespread as yesterday, but still some heavy downpours can be expected. Same thing tomorrow, and then we go into the weekend. Mid 90s is going to start to heat up back up to almost normal readings. Kind of funny to say back up to normal readings as opposed to what we had in June and July, and then a shower or two, just one or two of them here and there. However, okay rain chances kind of bumping up rain chances a little bit more going into next week details just a couple of minutes traffic authority been a quiet morning on the roads so thus far, far. should yeah. i knock on wood or something uh yeah yeah maybe something uh, but you know what i'm not going to complain no one's going to complain about these quiet roadways we can actually enjoy them if you are one of the lucky few that gets to enjoy this commute at this point good for you but uh always be careful out there 35 at Riddiman. traffic is already picking up it's that busy time where we know a lot of people are getting their days started maybe some heading to work grab that cup of coffee, breakfast taco, or maybe they're getting ready to drop the kids off at school. Regardless, always be careful on the roads. 35 at San Marcos, it is definitely picking up as we are approaching the 7 a.m. hour, but taking you right to the map, it was quiet for a little bit, a uh, little bit, but now we have a crash that popped up there off of 410 on the south side. Uh, I'm going to have to call our friends at Trans Guide to see if there are any cameras working in that direction, but right now we're really not seeing a delay just yet, but have to make sure we watch out for everybody that's on the scene, and of course, as always, Hope everyone's doing okay. But thankfully, no other delays at this point. The usual slowdowns, if you are traveling in from 281, we know a lot of folks are traveling down there yesterday, saw some delays. Uh, you're seeing the typical slowdowns, but that's due a lot to a lot of the construction that continues to take place out there. But elsewhere, no need to worry. Just drive carefully this morning. Again, we'll get our friends at Transguide on the phone, find out exactly what those conditions look like on the south side, and see how that crash could impact your morning commute. Guys? Thank you, Stephen. Today, the trial of former constable Michelle Barrientes Vela continues later this morning. Our Jonathan Cota joins us live and walks us through the details of day two of her public corruption trial. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Mark, and that's right, a bully with a badge. That's how former constable Michelle Barrientes Vela was described yesterday during day two of her public corruption trial. The head of organizing security of county parks told the jury that the then constable was aggressive on the phone just days before Easter 2019. Jesus Reyes, who rented a pavilion at the park for 15 years, said Barrientes Vela and other uniformed deputies confronted him and his family of overpaying security while hosting an Easter celebration. Let's take a listen. She told me it's uh, better in my interest to pay up the money. That's, that was what her words. Say that again? It was in my best interest to pay up the money. The ex-constable's defense team caused the incident a misunderstanding and also says Barrientes Vela had been told uh, by Reyes' reservation and had been canceled. Barrientes Vela is accused of tampering with security payment logs and turning in false records while under criminal investigation. Now, Mark Stephanie, the testimonies continue later this morning. You can keep up with that trial by heading over to our website, ksat.com, our app, ksat plus, and the ksat YouTube channel. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, ksat 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also happening today, Sheriff Javier Salazar and the Bear County Sheriff's Office will be hosting an eviction prevention clinic that's at the Bear County Elections Office. Now, and that is located at 1103 South 30 Street. The clinic starts at 6.30 p.m. and community partners will provide attendees with useful information regarding unlawful landlord actions, rights you have as a tenant, and helpful information on rental and utility assistance. 
the public is welcome to attend that clinic and ask questions and learn all about your rights as a tenant. So for more information, you can call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. In your morning headlines, a federal judge has blocked the enforcement of Idaho's abortion ban in situations where it interferes with federal standards for emergency care. The ban was set to take effect today. The ruling was in response to a request by the Biden administration and its challenge to parts of the Idaho law. The challenge is based on the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act. The Justice Department says Idaho's abortion ban criminalizes abortion care that physicians are obligated to offer in medical emergencies. Now, the Idaho Attorney and General's office declined to comment about possibly appealing that order. Trigger laws banning abortion are also said to take effect Thursday in Tennessee and here in Texas. Kentucky's governor touting new state legislation aimed at helping areas hard hit by recent flooding. The governor, Andy Bashir said the Eastern Kentucky flood relief legislation would provide relief to those flood ravaged communities. At least 39 people were killed in the flooding that tore through the eastern part of the state last month. Thousands were left without homes while businesses and schools were destroyed. The package would send millions of dollars to the areas named in the presidential declaration of major disaster. Communities could then use that money to pay for personnel and services used during the flood, uh, as well as their recovery. The latest announcement by President Joe Biden sending major financial relief to more than 40 million Americans who could see their student loan debt reduced and in many cases erased completely. Now the president canceling $10,000 in federal student loans for most borrowers. That amount going up to 20,000 for Pell Grant recipients, but some are calling the plan astonishingly un unfair. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest from Washington. This morning, financial relief for millions of Americans. President Joe Biden announcing he'll wipe out $10,000 in federal student debt for most borrowers, fulfilling a key campaign promise. The weight was lifted off my shoulders, mostly for my parents because it stresses them out. Loan forgiveness for anyone making less than $125,000 a year or couples making less than $250,000. I feel like it gives a relief for people that actually need it. Biden also canceling up to $20,000 for recipients of Pell Grants, a move the NAACP is praising. There's still more to be done, but this is a great step in the right direction. But not everyone is on board. Why forgive loans that someone is choose knowingly, they're signing something saying that I'm taking on this debt, I'm responsible for this debt, and then complain after they pick a job that doesn't pay their debt. Republicans echoing that sentiment. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell calling it a slap in the face to every family who sacrificed to save for college, every graduate who paid their debt. Other critics say the plan will fuel inflation. The White House, though, quick to compare the plan to the financial assistance loans businesses got during the pandemic, many of which were later granted loan forgiveness. 43 million Americans have federal student debt with an average balance of almost 38,000. A third of them owe less than 10 grand. People can start, finally crawl out from under that mountain of debt. I was telling my coworkers, like, hey, look at this. I'm like free of debt. I'm free of debt. Biden is also extending a pandemic era pause on federal student loan payments until the end of the year for what he called the final time. As for student loan forgiveness, those interested should keep an eye out on the federal student aid website. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. And the time now, 639 and 77 degrees for now. More than four months after fire destroyed a Southside daycare, could not distinguish one man's hope and commitment to reopen. Up next, how the Angel Guardian Daycare is serving its community once again. 643, a local man still hasn't forgotten the feeling of seeing his life's work go up in flames. Fire destroyed Guardian Angel Daycare back in April, a Southside business that he says he and his wife built out of love more than 35 years ago. However, as Katrina Weber reports, that neighborhood staple is back from the ashes and open to children once again. The day that they called me that the, my, my building was on fire, now I wanted to hide under a rock somewhere and not come out. Instead, Eli Guerra stood by that early morning in April, watching the former church that housed his daycare burn to the ground. Even with a name like Guardian Angel, it seemed nothing could protect it. There are times that I want to just, just stop and quit. And you know what? No, I can't. Guerra says he and his late wife Susan had made it their mission to help the Southside community. 
Together, they opened the doors to Guardian Angel in 1986. Seeing the fire happen, our hearts broke, and we were wondering, what are we going to do? Like many parents, Pamela and Justice Setafe were left in a child care bind. Last week, though, their prayers were answered. May the Lord bless not only people who work here, who uh, is offering their service here, but also for those people, those children who are coming here. Guerra was able to open his doors again with help from city officials and the community. Can we come in here? Yes. Yes. He moved all operations into the one section still standing, now downsized from 17,000 square feet of space to just 2,400. Still, he sees it as a big blessing. It is a miracle that we're back over here again. And the miracles, it seems, didn't end there. That fire destroyed almost everything. One of the only things to survive was this cross. It was pulled out of the debris by a demolition crew. The roof fell down, everything around her burned. This portrait of the Virgin of Guadalupe also stood up to the fire. Guerra says he is just as determined to make it through to keep serving the community. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Time check 645. We'll talk about our rain chances with Mike Osterhage in just one moment. Yeah, but for now, let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It looks like, I don't want to jinx it, but roads are looking better than they did <laughs> yesterday. Well, yeah, that's what we're seeing here on TransGuide. And, and don't worry about jinxing things because anytime a situation happens, we're always going to look for that solution. But as we get a quick look around town, 410 at Old Pier, Salt 281 at San Pedro, things look good on TransGuide. In fact, no delays that we're spotting, and, and it just looks like a normal, typical Thursday morning where we're seeing the commute pick up. But unfortunately, while TransGuide cameras are showing some easy drives, we are still seeing an issue there on the south side. This has been reported of this was reported, I should say, a few minutes ago, and you can see that crash over here. But before we get to that crash, I do want to talk about what we are seeing. Just the usual slowdowns along 1604, 151, also here along 410 near the east side. But let's go ahead and just bring you into where this crash has been reported by TxDOT. It is in the southbound lanes, not far from Roosevelt Avenue. I did talk to our friends at TransGuide over the phone and we were trying to find a shot of the conditions out there, but right now it doesn't look like we can bring that to you. However, we do want to remind you just to be safe out there if your travels are going to take you in the southbound lanes of 410. But we'll watch it closely and give you those updates, of course, throughout the morning. 37 at Fair Avenue looks like traffic is getting going there, and 37 at Indian Hills, just another busy morning. But, Mike, I'll say this is a lot better than what we were seeing yesterday. Yeah, we had those uh, heavy downpours that popped up right in the, the heart of the morning commute yesterday. And here's another great uh, picture. Rain gauge, nearly six inches of much needed rain. Hopefully it helps out some of that uh, vegetation out there. Wine glasses may be half full, but boy, that rain gauge is just about full. Beautiful picture, and uh, that's going to be added to in some situations. We do have some rain out there right now. Again, not really anything in the, uh, the metropolitan area. The biggest area as of right now is is here off to the uh, southeast and this is extending from roughly Floresville down Quero, Yorktown, along the coast. All this is sort of drifting down to the south. We've got some fairly decent downpours here in the, uh, well, right around Quero and just south of there. So these are coming down at the rate of about, uh, say, uh, three, two, three, four inches per hour. And that will continue, like I said, to uh, drift down there to the south. Here's a quick check as far as rainfall rates are concerned. And this is what we have to watch out for because, again, all these hefty downpours that dump a lot of rain very, very quickly. Some of these numbers right now here just to the south of Quero, again, 4.7 inches per hour. Now, that doesn't mean you'll get that much since they are moving, but they're not moving along real, real quickly. So this is uh, basically coming down in buckets out there. That's what we have to watch out for, and that has been the case and will continue to be the case. Elsewhere, off to the uh, southwest of town, we're still looking at some of these showers and some some storms down here around Catula and again those are still coming down at a fairly good rate and those are pretty much working their way down to the south moving along pretty well so they're not just sitting there in in one spot and then elsewhere further on up to the north that one little spot there in uh, portions of the hill country we're also getting a few more showers now here in uh, uvalde county just right around sabinal just to the southwest of uh, uvalde as well so these are kind of drifting down to the uh, kind of southeast nothing in and around the metropolitan area 
for the time being. 78 degrees here in town, low to mid 70s on average, a couple of upper 70s here and there. We're going to stay fairly steady throughout the rest of the morning with those few showers, a couple of thunderstorms scattered about the area, some decent downpours. It'll start to sort of ease a bit by midday. And then rain chances pick back up somewhat. I don't think as good a chance of rain as what we had yesterday. Maybe not quite as widespread. 92 for a high temperature. But again, you got to look out for a couple of heftier downpours. This computer model, which is basically just initializing with some of those showers down there to the south, not in parts of the hill country, is keeping those around throughout the uh, afternoon hours. And then we'll have a couple of more popping up here and there. Again, fewer further between, even some sunshine further off to the uh, east. And that's why going for 90 two for a high temperature today. Then we'll start to heat up just a little bit more going into the next few days. 85 degrees at noon, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. Same thing later on today. Again, 30% chance for some rain, 92 high temperature. Then we go into tomorrow. Well, in 94 will start to go up a, you know, a couple more degrees each and every day. Still a 30% chance for some rain tomorrow. Much less, basically nothing over the weekend, one or two perhaps here and there. 95, steamy 95 degrees. It ain't 100, but it's going to be steamy. But <laughs> and more rain chances next week, too. And, and the great thing about our KSAT Pigskin Classic, we are not at the mercy of Mother Nature. Thank goodness gracious. Yeah, so three great games go down. There. Don't forget the clear bag policy yes. at the Dome. That's the Dome policy. Got to have a clear bag something so absolutely a good a good reminder we yeah. have uh, some of those details on our website as well just in case you want to check into that i was thinking about the dome and and the chances of if even if there are small chances of rain we didn't have to worry about it don't have to it's worry about so it at all yeah, yeah we're really looking forward to that's pretty much all we're talking about no. uh, off camera here at ksat 12 these days and uh, go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and, and tell our crew behind the scenes thank you in advance for all the hard work you are about to yes. do all day on saturday okay now i'm being wrapped 650 <laughs> 77 degrees yes it's gonna be a long day and speaking of the ksat pigskin classic that tomorrow on gmsa we're gonna have a preview what you need to know about this weekend's highly anticipated high school football triple header. All right, outside with live cam, the sun is coming up. You're watching GMSA. We'll be back after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are following a breaking news overnight that Uvalde Police Chief Pete Erdondo has been fired. So what's next for the grieving families demanding more justice, some planning a $27 billion lawsuit? And then while many are celebrating after President Biden's student loan forgiveness announcement, some are calling the move unfair. We're going to have the latest on that fallout. Those stories and so much more right here on Good Morning America. Coming up today on GMSA 9, a local team working on a project to reintroduce native freshwater mussels to the San Antonio River because of the important role they play in our environment. Plus, we're talking the newest episode of South Texas Crime Stories with co-host co Erica Hernandez about the San Antonio Strangler. And Mike is going to join us again along with his SA Live co-host Fiona to talk about their involvement in the KSET Pigskin Classic on Saturday. And they're going to be handling some of the halftime entertainment coverage. So we're going to talk more about that. You know you're going to be here, right, Mike? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, that's coming up today on GMSA at 9. For now, let's check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, if Mike's going to be here, I got to be here too. Yeah. I mean, it's a given. It's a party. Hey. It's going to be a GMSA party at nine. <laughs> All right. But right now at this hour, we are seeing traffic already picking up there. You could see at 35 at San Monaco's. Now, these are the usual shots that we're showing you, but do want to show the slowdowns right there on the map. And also you got to watch out for this crash here. We'll work to bring you some updates in the southbound lanes, not far from Roosevelt, Mike. Sir, roads are dry here in town, so definitely not a repeat of yesterday. Plenty of clouds hanging around here. We do have some rain around the area. Actually, a couple of showers and I was popping up right there on the uh, south side of San Antonio, Bear County, going down to 37, so watch out for some of that. And a few scattered showers around the area today, 92 for high temperature. About the same thing tomorrow, but slightly warmer. Mid-90s over the weekend, hot and humid this weekend, but more rain chances even next week. Good news. Good news. Okay, we'll see you guys later. And at we'll nine. see y'all later at nine. at nine as well. Have a great day. We're back at nine. Until then, see ya.